the weed they get Sit back, relax, we got the brain of Ben No need to stress in the house, is Van Bellen The game is when surfing, you can't yell them or tell them We get the news, the views, the win biz The brand's gear tips, plus the world's best quiz The cops, P-W-A We're professionals without the pay There's nothing in pole dancing that we won't chat From tandem boards to a windsurfing cat It's your one stop shop for laughing, listen Tune in each week or you'll be doing the missing Welcome to the Windsurf Podcast with Benny and PVB. Our special guest is Mark Pere. Unfortunately, he tried to fight me. I messed him up and now he is injured. Now that he's got nothing else to do, he's been invited on the show. Guys, kick back and get to the choppa. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> oh, that stupid app say. It's just endless oh, entertainment. It's worrying me seeing you do what you did on Instagram. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm definitely oh. worried. Okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger, exactly bring worried. this in then. Um, <laughs> all right, welcome to the podcast this week. It's a little bit of a, a late one. Not a late one, but it was a bit of a last minute one because uh, Paul Van Bellen is off on a maybe a little trip. So we've uh, we've mm. squeezed this in a little early. We have got uh, Mr. Mark Paré once again. Ooh, there he is. Here he is. Hello, He's injured. Guys. He's absolutely bored shitless. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to get him involved with everything we can. And we are going to discuss today the Chile event, IWT Pilway event, second event of the calendar. Um, obviously, Mr. Mark Paré will be feeling a little bit subdued. Left out. About you left out as we talk about a lot of this. So if he starts to shed a tear, you know, let's all stick together uh, and get behind him. But we're going to have a look at the draw. The draws come out. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, the world rankings and how that's going to play out. We've got guys that have not had a good Japan event, which is the first event of the year. Of the year and then who could come back in this Chile event. So boys, all been good. I would say, Mark, what you've been up to, but have you, have you been up to anything interesting? Actually, <laughs> There's been some progress. Yesterday, I got my stitches removed. So that's yeah. one little step. And okay. then today, today, I got back to the gym for the first time. I can't In the do gym? anything. With, yeah, I can't do anything with, uh, with my foot yet. But at least, you know, I could work out like my legs, like the, the quads and stuff. And yeah, just it felt good to move my body after just being on the couch for for three weeks. I, so, you know what? When I did my foot, I got back on the bike pretty early and they were like, I was just using my heel. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, that boot, it doesn't half get a little bit rancid if you if you down the gym. <laughs> just a warning. <laughs> Don't do too much. I, I know that. I know that. I actually ordered an extra one, like kind of a home boot, you know, so I can use more like for home and to sleep in it and stuff. So, That's cool, though, Mark. I must yeah. be, uh, must feel good to have some progress. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's like yeah. little little things, you know. But mentally, it's good for sure. You yeah, know, it feels yeah, like at anyway. least I'm, I'm, I'm going towards something now and working towards something, not just yeah. waiting. <laughs> but on the, on the <laughs> plus side, we have Mark today for our chili event yeah. preview, heat draw, extravaganza. Um, I've got to say, so the event kicks off, I think, is it next Monday? Some, it's, just, it's about a week's time. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of the boys and girls, i will be looking forward to this event. It is one of the sort of standout venues on the calendar, Port Tap, down the line. So a lot of them have gone early. And I have been looking at Instagram. This is probably going to hurt Mark a little. <laughs> ben that has gross. gone. <laughs> it's certainly hurting looking at that. This happens sometimes, Mark. It just we lose we lose people on this podcast, and then it yeah. takes. Oh, he's back! Oh, he's back! He's back! I had a power cut. What's going on? Oh, he lost power in Portugal. I'm in the dark here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, am I? I'm in the dark. Okay, well, we're in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> a, there's a bit of a storm going on in Sagres at the moment, so maybe that's mm. uh, that's what's happened. So where was yeah, I okay. going to play? I was going to share some Instagram love, wasn't I? That's what I was going to Yeah, do. so the uh, the draw, 
Yeah, but look, uh, check this. These are the oh. conditions that they've been sailing in so far. So anyone listening to audio only, this looks like, is it Top of Karma? I mean, Mark, you've been to Chile yeah. a few times. Maybe yeah, you can... Uh... Yeah. Well, looks Top of Karma is one of my favorite waves on Earth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just a sandbank, but it's just a super long left, you know, and... It's like breaking next to this rock that you can see in the background. It's like kind of a little rock. Well, not little, but it's like a big rock, kind of an island thing. And then it just breaks from there and goes uh, downwind. And when the sandbanks are right, it's super, super long. It's like a freaking train. And yeah, so I'm, yeah, that's hurting me a little bit now. <laughs> Looking at that, it looks pretty, pretty sick. And, yeah. Uh, and by the videos that I've seen and what I've talked to with uh, Julian and stuff, it seems like the sandbanks are pretty good this year. So, well, I'm happy for them at least because I think last year the, the sandbanks were not as good. So I'm happy at least they got to experience Topo Calma, uh, you know, w working properly. It's weird to see. Yeah, um, how does the wind work there, Mark? Because there's, there's, a, there's a big cliff rock right yeah. there the wind just comes down oh i yeah. see there's a rock just sticking out to sea but there's a gap yeah. Is it? yeah there's uh there's this one and then there's another one like right beside it towards the shore and uh, yeah the wind's super gusty especially as you get close to these rocks so basically sometimes you can be on a 4-0 and you can get this like 40 knots gust wind and then suddenly you, you fall down on your back because there's nothing so it can be mm. pretty gusty especially when you get close to the rock but mm. uh yeah, it yeah, it's a little weird, you know, because there's like a cliff behind it. There's like kind of a mountain as well, or like right behind the beach where the wind comes from. So yeah, it it's not a very stable wind, honestly. It can mm. get pretty aggressive and gusty, but yeah, yeah. The, the the wave makes up for it basically. So and because it's a um a beach break the the wave does it change much i mean like does it is the bank sometimes bad and sometimes good yeah and, i mean yeah yeah the, like last year and well and when i was there in december 22 it, those sandbanks were not so good they were probably the worst that i've seen them you know saying that it's still like a freaking amazing wave you know it's still really long and stuff but the yeah. way the sands the sandbanks were the wave was not like fully lined up and it was slightly too fast you know because mm. uh, i remember from the first year i went that was the best sandman that i've seen there and it was just like a, it was insane like it was just you would get like on a rhythm like clang 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 you know and it could be like mass high and it just wouldn't stop you know wow. and, and sometimes the section of course you would get like this section right in front of you that would throw and then you could get underneath it and go around and it would slow down again and you could do turns so it was like yeah, uh, yeah mind-blowing you know when the when the sandbanks are lined up it's insane it's one of my favorite waves hands down so i haven't been there but there's there's two main spots matanzas and topokama right yeah is that yeah okay. and matanzas yeah. is the you can literally just there's like a little town there you yeah. can drive there easily whereas topokama is like a four-wheel drive kind of hour long trip down a exactly track or something yeah 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 no, normally like you stay like around the matanzas area just because that's yeah, yeah where mainly all the housing and yeah and uh, restaurants and stuff is yeah so it's like yeah just uh, nice and then you have the spot like right in front of the hotel surato which is like the sponsor of the event and it's pretty cool and then to drive to to topocalma you need to take like this dirt road like now most of it it's paved but you need to take kind of a, the dirt road then you go past puertecillo which is like this surfing wave that it's sick it's like this really long point break mm -hmm. left hander and then you go around and you know you can either drive over onto the you go over the dunes and then you drive on the beach but apparently that's not allowed anymore or you can just you have to drive around then there's like a, a way called the hacienda you know which is like the private land that uh, that is owned by one guy like all the way to topo calma and then you just drive through that dirt road down to the beach so hmm. yeah and top, I mean, top of calma, yeah 
just before we go any further, I don't. I've got massive power cut here, and I have no clue how this is still working. It's like there's okay. no power in the house. <laughs> so just in case I disappear, carry on because yeah. I just don't know why I've still got internet. <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Have you got so, uh, mobile? Rece have you got reception on your mobile? Yeah, but it's working. I don't know. If there's no, but I was just saying maybe you can do hotspot off the off the phone if you if yeah. your internet cuts out. Yeah, well, we'll um, see. is Topakama is that a higher quality wave than Matanzas, Mark? Or yeah, or it... I mean it's it's slightly different. Um, yeah, Topakama basically is like more of a high quality wave. It's like way cleaner and and longer and yeah, just a more lined up wave. And Matanzas yeah. it. It's a little weird, like the way it works, because it starts breaking right behind some rocks, you know? Mm. So you get like this rebound. So it, it kind of just peaks at one point, then it kind of fades away, and then it peaks again, like right at the end of the rocks, and then it just um, like uh, connects with the sandbank, you know? That it either close out, closes out, or then sometimes you can link it uh, all the way down, like in the middle of the beach, there's like a, a pier, mm -hmm. That used to be there uh like before the the, the tsunami and then it's like mm -hmm. all so there's like poles like underwater so you have to be careful if you end up there but mm -hmm. you basically have like all this range from upwind of the rocks to upwind in front of the rocks all the way down to the middle of the of the bay and yeah. uh, Where, it, where's this, what this is topo calma this is okay this is topo calma okay yeah 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 is this tomorrow. an average sort of size day? Is this kind of a typical day there, or is it... it's like head yeah. high? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of a smaller day, actually. I would say. Okay. I mean, yeah. th th these days you can get them quite often. I would say. Yeah. Then, yeah, the yeah, then you get other days where it's like logo to mast, and uh, I haven't gotten much bigger than mast. I know Morgan got it like pretty freaking huge the last time he was there and that was like right after i left um mm. but i've never gotten it like super big but yeah okay. it's yeah it'd, it'd be pretty it'd, heavy at mast high wouldn't it yeah it's yeah it's a heavy wave yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay no thanks for that have you checked out anyone else i'm just trying to think i haven't really seen many other videos online who, uh, who else is have you seen any others drop uh, I it's think Miguelito posted some stuff as well. Julian posted a couple of clips too. Um, well, else? Federico, uh, yeah, Marcia, Julian, I'm just looking Federico, yeah, yeah. Takuma. So, um, what we're going to do? We're going to have a look at the draws of uh, because they they've already drawn the competition, which is yeah. which is not normal, is it? Usually, no. it's you wait till registration and then the heat's been drawn. So, my only question is. If we get to next week and someone doesn't turn up, does that then change the whole draw? I have no clue, honestly. As you say, not normally it's like right at the last minute, you know, like after registration, like official registration. Okay. So, so I guess they are just counting on the on the online registration for now. So, I guess we'll see what happens. But I guess yeah, that then they need to readjust it if there's uh, someone that can't come for whatever reason or someone that can't compete for whatever other reason. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is I think we'll just take a look at the draw that's already been done. Again, could be subject to change, but at least it gives us something to kind of base it off at the moment. Um, so I'm going to go to, it could go to, I think, yeah, that's probably the easiest one. I don't know if it's seeable. So from what I've seen, this is the men's draw. Obviously, we can have a look at the women's and uh, masters and all that sort of stuff, I guess, when we go through. But that seems like a lot of people. So they've got basically 56 people entered. And they've got basically a challenger fleet where only two riders qualify from that, as far as I can understand. Yeah, two riders qualify. And then they've already got 30 people waiting. So that's, you know, I think that's super interesting just in itself. So, it, you know, we've got how many people's in this one? 24. Yeah, so 24. So four, five, six seats. Six seats of four. My maths is correct. 
<laughs> 60 to 4. Who have we got in this Challenger series? Because I think it's quite a nice way to do it. Um, rather, you know, if you've got the time and if you've got the conditions, because then let's say you win this Challenger fleet. It's kind of like pretty cool anyway. You've already got some yeah. sort of result. You know, chances are if you're coming through the Challenger fleet, you're maybe not going to win the main competition. Who knows? You never know. But so then, you know, it's better than just coming last in the main fleet. If you've won the Challenger fleet, you already proved and you've had some good competition and you've definitely got more bang for your buck than someone who's gone out in the first round that's already seeded through would be my take on it. And it gives a chance for us to see some of the other riders going against probably more equally matched riders. Because if you come against Marsilio Brown, you know, you, if you were there, you know, the top seeded riders in the first round and you don't go through, that could be it. And it's like, yeah. you don't really get a chance to prove yourself. So I think this Challenger series, I've always said, if conditions allow, which is always the difficulty in windsurfing, it's a great way to do it. So it'll be nice to see how this pans out. Um, so let's yeah. have a look who is in this Challenger series. See if we can see some names that maybe a few of us know. I, definitely, I won't know a lot of them. There could be some local riders in there. Have you got any, um, I mean, I guess some of the local riders, the good ones will be have wild cards. Yeah, it's like the Tim Van Dam from Tenerife. Looks like he's in the Challenger fleet. Uh, yeah. We got Tim Air from Israel. Um, yeah. Feel free to shout. I don't know. Lucas Meldrum's yeah. gone over there. Interesting. Yeah, uh, Vicente Gonzalez as well is a friend of mine from there, a local. Finn Mel. He's pretty good too. Finn as from well. Ireland. From yeah. Ireland. So you Finn know, this will be a real. Local. Yeah, this will be an interesting one. There'll probably be a lot of South Americans in there mixed in. It'll be a good chance for them to sort of, you know, put a show on. And hopefully, I mean, again, I haven't spoke and understand the live streaming schedule, but hopefully that will be streamed. Again, I don't know how possible that will be and what the circumstances are. But uh, the Challenger fleet will be an interesting one. Like I say, two riders going into the main fleet. But I think what we need to do is go through this main fleet and see if we can see any interesting matchups, any death heats that are coming in, because um, there should be some interesting ones. Um, I'm just going to remind you of how it looks after Japan. So leading the tour at the moment. In fact, I'll share that screen because I think it's probably easier for the guys that are watching on YouTube. Because just a little refresher. So leading the tour at the moment, Bernd Rodiger. Obviously, one in Japan with that buzzer-beating wave. Uh, Marsilio Brown, obviously, in second place. Victor Fernandez up in third. Got Morgan Nero in fourth. Then we got you, Mark Paré, Ooh, in wow. fifth place. <laughs> hey, you've got to change the uh, the uh, sponsor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very true, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we got Takara Ishii from Japan. Obviously, did pretty solid there, fifth place. Then we Swifty, yep. we've got Rory Swift, we've got Ryu Nagoshi up there in seventh. Wow. Ooh, um, good, Thomas, yeah. Thomas Traverse in ninth, Antoine Albert in ninth, Marino Gill, obviously new sponsor for him, he's up in ninth. Julian Flesche as well, good result from him, Star Attack Rider up in ninth place. And then we do have a few of the guys, I'd just point them out, who probably won't be happy with their position at the moment, which is Anton Martin in 13th. I'm sure Takuma Sugi won't be happy with 13th. Liam Dunkerbeck, 13th. Hayata Ishii, uh, 13th. We've also got uh, Tatum Fleche, Uma. Uh, we've got Philip Costa in 17th. You know, Jake Shetaway. So, you know, these are the guys that we're going to be looking out for. And I think, obviously, I mentioned a big name there. Philip Costa in 17th place. Is he going to be in 17th place after this event in Chile? You would expect not, I would say, but let's see. Let's have a look at his draw. Let's see where Brown ends up. Let's see where all these guys are. Okay, so first heat in the main draw, in the men's main draw, Marsilio Brown, Adam Varchol, Kamiju Ban, not an easy one, and, uh, and then one of the challengers coming up through that challenger uh, series. Mark, what do you reckon? I mean, Adam is really good at wave riding and uh, I've seen some good stuff from him lately. I think, you know, he likes wave riding more than jumping. And uh, I've heard as well that last year he was sailing good. So I think, you know, as 
Sí. As you mentioned the other day, you know, like this, you never know how this, uh, this wave riding heats are going to come out. So I think he could cause some damage if he starts landing, you know, well, linking up good waves and then landing some moves, which he can do, you know. Yeah. And, and Camille is just consistent, you know, he's always producing damage in those kind of conditions. So you, you could expect him doing well, you know. So, yeah, you know, and Rao, the, 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 the same. Yeah, no, I was going to say, you wouldn't have put it past. Like, there could be massive upset in that first round. Yeah. It's Port Tack down the line. Adam Varchol, like you say, he is mainly known for his surfing. His, his, you know, that's what he loves to do. He's actually a big-time surfer. Um, he had that big takedown in Jaws, if anyone remembers that clip. Um, yeah, and again, Camille Duban been causing upsets all his bloody life. He's not even upsets anymore. You just expect him to be right up there. Then yeah. you've got Brown. And the dangerous one here is the winner from the Challenger fleet. Now, if you're going to get into the top two in the Challenger fleet, it means you can win heats. It means you can sail solid. It means you've already got experience of the spot and you're going to be on a bit of a high, nothing to lose. So, yeah. you know, this is, uh, you know, always like this. We're going to go through all these heats and we're probably going to end up saying very similar things because there is a lot of good riders out there. And when you take the jump out and it's just wave riding only and you've got to find your rhythm, you've got to get into the link, can be uh, can be interesting. Um, OK, heat can number I, two. Go on. Can I, yeah, can I just add that um, because it's now a five-star event, it's a lot more exciting than last year, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you've got so many more big names and all of a sudden yeah it's just a lot more exciting <laughs> and, yeah uh, there's not many easy heats when you have a little scan yeah. through i had a scan through earlier you're you are like if you're in one of them heats i've heard it all before you go oh man i've got a really tough heat but then you look mm. at the other heats and you're like well no. <laughs> there aren't many easy ones there's always no. one where you think i wouldn't mind but most of them especially when yeah, you're yeah. Right you know what's cool as well, Ben, is, you know, over the last few years, sorry just to, just to break this up a bit, but now because we've been doing a fair few podcasts and, you know, all these, you know, mentioning all these names, I'm starting to feel quite familiar with a lot of these names, which is take, you know, I remember back in the day, the 90s and whatever, you know, you'd have all these names that you're kind of familiar with. And then it sort of went a bit hazy for me, but it's good at the moment. I feel like there's a really good bunch of uh, sailors that we can all kind of understand a bit more yeah, anyway i just wanted to throw that in there there's something yeah, I, but I, noticed. Think, I think what it is is you've probably been doing a bit more with the live stream you know you've been doing the podcast yeah. with me so you start to get more familiar and i think that's the mm. biggest thing that's gone wrong in windsurfing over the years we lose track of all that because it used to be in our face it was on the tv it was everywhere now mm. you have to pay you have to go out of your way to find the channels or to find the interest, and then it's all there for you. So as soon as you yeah. do pay interest, and it's like ride, you know, drive to survive and all. As soon as you have interest behind the scenes, in the riders, in the stories, everything becomes way more interesting. You know, there's a lot yeah. more at stake rather That's than good. just some random dudes who you don't really know, just names on a sheet, a paper. It's never got that yeah. same feel as when you start to, you know pick up like different riders that you might like the style of or personalities or you know it's, it definitely gets interesting yeah anyway. okay um, heat, heat number two uh takuma sugi takara ishi uh dita van der eiken and alex vargas local boy he's pretty Mark? good I was going to I say, talk it. to yeah. Alex Vargas because you've been yeah. there, you've seen him sail. Yeah. I've only seen pictures and video. So, yeah, give us a uh, Alex, Alex is one of the best local riders there, and you could expect some damage to happen from his side. You know, he's a, he's not just a good sailor. I would say in those kind of conditions, he's a world class sailor. So, really, I think, yeah, I think he could be causing some damage. I mean, I, I know he can pull Takas, Goiters, good turns, three sixty. So. He has the, the moves in the back, you know. So, you know, again, you never know how the heat's going to play out, but, you know, he's got the repertoire and he's got the skill. So I would expect him, you know, with the local knowledge and everything to cause some damage, honestly. How's his uh, competition sailing? I haven't seen him compete, um, but I know that he's done well in the past. So, okay. Yeah. 
Because well, okay. that's usually a big one. You know, you yeah. can see a lot of people free sailing. Like, oh, my God, this guy's a ripper. He's going to kill it. And then in competition, yeah. you're like nothing. But I have seen his name up there in previous competitions, yeah. you know, making finals with the IWT staff. And cause, he has caused, I think, a few upsets in the IWT staff. But obviously now, yeah. five star, everyone's there. Very interesting indeed. Looking forward to this. I really yeah. am. And, you know, Dieter van der Eiken's over there. We know he's good down Port Tack down the line. Uh, yeah. Takuma yeah. Sugi, Takara Ishii. You know, really tough rounds, aren't they? These are difficult. Yeah, yeah. not easy at all. That's for sure. Um, wow. Hello. Look at this one. <laughs> uh, heat number three, Robbie Swift, um, Federico Mauricio, Miguel Chapuis, and wait for it, Francisco Goya. Ooh. Whoa. I didn't know he was entering into the yeah. main event. I didn't know either. Wow. Uh, okay. That is That's interesting. cool. That's cool. So how do you play this one? I mean, again, you've got um, Robbie Swift, tried and tested. You know, he's got a house in Chile. He's got a house in Matanzas, I think, isn't he? Yeah, not anymore. He sold it during COVID year, okay. but uh, but yeah, he he spent there a lot of time. He used to spend there the, the whole winter. So you know, he and he's really good in those kind of conditions. You know, yeah. So uh, you and would expect him to do well. Federico, Federico as well. He's been spending there a lot of time over the past year. So you know, he he knows the spot. He's he's put the time in and the effort in and the training in. So. You know, would will be interesting because he could be doing some damage as well. Miguelito, I was with him in Tarifa this winter, and he was sailing really well as well in the offshore down the line stuff. He looks um, on it. Yeah. I think he looks he looks yeah. on it, and he's just I don't know if he got dropped by Neil Pry JP or he changed sponsors, but sometimes that gives you that extra bit of fuel to kind of yeah. say, "I'll show you what you're missing," you know, yeah. and. Again, let's see. But from the video I saw recently, I just put him actually in Senate Sunday. I was watching it, and he looks like he's on form. He looks like yeah. he's in good form. So, and then Francisco Goya, where does he fit in? <laughs> he's visiting family in Argentina. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, if I, if I'm fully honest with you, like I haven't really seen his port sailing in real life, so I don't know. You know, especially over the years, how how it's changed or not, you know. But yeah, uh, yeah I, I have no clue. I mean, you guys tell me. Like, uh, well, it it's funny you should say that because I uploaded on my YouTube channel a few weeks ago a, um, a World Cup event from 1998 when I went to um, yeah, around the world, and he was sailing sick on Port Tack. But I mean, that was yeah, 1998. Well. That's, that's quite amazing. You think about twenty. That's, that's amazing, dude. He was doing, in that video. He's down in Esperance, south. Of the, you know, in here, Western Australia, he's doing forwards off the lip. It's pretty yeah. sick. He was sailing. It's it amazing. Twenty six years ago. Anyway, that's cool. Wow. Interesting to see how he goes. Well, imagine he's the one causing the upset. Then <laughs> that's going to be funny. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be uh, difficult for him. That that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you I, know, that's Robbie. good. I think the point of difference is going to be tricks, I would guess, you know, and uh, that's what I was going to mention before. That's where I see that Miguel has progressed, you know, compared to the, to like other times that I've seen him sail down the line. Like it's yeah. that uh, consistency with coiters and I, he was doing some cool air tackles as well. So yeah, I think that's where he, you know, if it, especially if it's a little smaller, I think if it's bigger, the, it's going to change, you know, because it's not yeah. the same kind of sailing then to do those tricks. But I think if it's smaller, especially, it's going to be interesting to see because then he's going to be able to do all of this move. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at the forecast in a bit as well, just to maybe yeah. we can give people an idea of how it's kind of looking. Because um, I, I, it looks to me, again, I've never been there, but I think it looks pretty good. I think they're going to get some. They're going to get some conditions, even though we already got some as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next heat: uh, Morgan Nero, Jules Donnell, Anthony Ruanes, and Andres Andres. He is the he is the chef and mm -hmm. one of the partners of Hotel Surajo of the of the band host. Okay. And he's a pretty good sailor too. 
Um, okay. So he's like a driving force behind the getting the event yeah. there. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think he's working together with Felipe, which you can see in the hit below. Um, yes. But yeah, I think yeah, like from yeah, the the more famous names. Uh, I think Morgan and Jules, um, they are gonna be like the standouts. I would say in this hit. I know yeah. uh, Anthony Ruenes. He's a super good sailor. And mm -hmm. especially during contest, he's been putting it together, you know, and causing some some damage over the past years. So I would definitely not rule him out. But uh, I would say, yeah, Jules and uh, Morgan, they are the ones to beat here in in this heat. Mm. Uh, I think also uh, Jules he's... new sponsors. <clears throat> yeah, I saw that he's gonna be riding Gastro and Taboo now. So yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, I didn't really see that coming, but obviously there's been a bit of a switch around because. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk about in a minute, but uh, Marino Gill, obviously on Neil Pride JP, it's kind of a big signing for Neil Pride JP, and then Miguel Chapuis going to North and I think Flicker, Flicker, I think yeah. Yeah, Flicker North and Flicker, and then obviously Jules and L leaving uh, JP Neil Pride and going to Gastra to boost. So there has been a few movers and shakers. That's uh, yeah. interesting. There's some late ones as well. Some you know some quite late in the season. Matt Chekwakovsky just announcing he's signed for Neil Pride as well. So yep. there's definitely been some movements going on. Um, next heat, Antoine Martin, Liam Dunkebeck, Hayata Ishii, and uh, Felipe Villas. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, local? Yeah, Felipe is one of the organizers, and he's a local, amazing sailor over in Chile. Um, mm. And then you've got Hayata... Uh, you know, he's super good at the way of riding stuff, really good style. I really like his style. And Liam, mm -hmm. I think he could do well as well in this heat. Um, yeah, I've been sailing, well, of course, like over in Ukip and stuff with him. But as well, I was sailing with him in uh, in the, like a little bit further south from uh, from Pozo this summer with the, with the yeah. south swell. And he was sailing good as well. So I think now, you know, he's grown up, his level has improved. I think he could, you know, show a good increase in level and he could do really well. And then Antoine, he's good in those conditions, you know. So yeah. I think it's going to be another hit uh, fact <laughs> of action. <laughs> yeah, there isn't many easy yeah, heats, though, is there? You know, no. When you go through these heats, you're thinking, like I was thinking before, if I had to put no. my neck on the line and go, right, these two are going through, these two are going through, these two are going through. It would be so difficult. You'd be yeah. making excuses the whole yeah. time, like, oh, but he could he could do, and all we, you know, <laughs> yeah. we might have to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what's good, isn't it? Now, that's what I was saying before that you know all the uh, the heats are stacked from the word go, which makes it exciting. That's yeah, cool. I mean, it would be interesting, as we do already mentioned. But if you put a jump in here, it's much easier. It's much easier to pick who yeah. might progress. If, as soon if as you, you put take a what? That jump out, if you put a jump in, you know, let's say it's jumping and riding. The jump. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, it's, okay, okay, okay. It's usually <laughs> easier to kind of go. Right. Okay, this guy's got this. This guy's got this. But wave mm -hmm. riding. If you're just in the zone, if you're just keyed into the, to the conditions, mm. sometimes mm. you just find your groove. And sometimes the most unexpected sailors are just in the groove, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it can totally happen. Totally. Happen. I mean, it, it, you can see that. I don't know if you guys follow the WSL, but you can see it clear, clearly with them happening, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes it, the underdog just is in sync with the ocean at that moment and then just, you know, that that's the damage. And, yeah, it's been proven over and over. So yeah, we've it's, seen it in Cape Verde. We've seen it in lots of places. When it's riding only, everything does change. That is for sure. Yeah. Okay, next heat up. Marino Gill just talked about him. New sponsors this year. Philip Costa after that disappointing event in Japan. We got Ross Faro and Diego Fabris. 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 Yeah, Diego is another amazing sailor. His brother is Benjamin, and uh, they both sell amazing. Once again, they are capable to do goiter stackers and all these moves, mm. um, and they have like a good style and and turn on them. So I think both could be doing proper damage, you know, if, if they are in sync. Yeah. Cool. What you what are you thinking about Costa? Did did you? Everyone said he'd lost a lot of weight. 
yeah, I was talking to him and uh, he's like since the injury, since his leg sprung injury, he I think he's been putting in a lot of work, like uh, training and stuff, and he dropped a lot of weight. And uh, so, yeah, I think he's, yeah, I don't know like how much he said, but I think it was something around 10 kilos lighter than last year. I seem to remember or eight yeah. kilos lighter. So it's a lot. Um, and yeah, the, I think once again, that uh, I think if it's a little smaller, he is going to stand out more uh, if if they get the same size or similar size like last year, because then he's got all these tricks and, you know, he, he could he can easily just do them, you know. So I would just yeah count on him doing well, especially on the smaller stuff. And I, and if it's bigger, um, I haven't seen him sail as much when it's bigger in in Portak. But uh, I think he, he's he has spent a lot of time in Australia in the past. So I would yeah. just count that he's going to rip anyway. So yeah, I think Costa is going to be uh, yeah the standout of the heat or one of the standouts of the heat for sure. And he also won this event last year. I think we said last yeah. on the podcast. He won the Chile event last year. I think also in the final, Julian Salmon was in the final. Yeah. yeah. Um, trying to think. Kamiju Ban, was it? Kamiju? Yeah. And, uh, well, and uh, Baptiste as well. Ah, Baptiste. Okay. Yeah. Is Baptiste yeah. down? I haven't actually seen his name. Let's have a quick look. Um, so, yeah, Marino Gill as well. Um, he looks like he's been sailing good. Obviously, so the stuff yeah. I've seen recently has been more in starboard tag but he's actually looks like he's been improving pretty fast yeah. in starboard tag. yeah i mean he, he he's super talented so you know as soon as he just clicked you know it, it it was just you could just see him progress the same with leon both of them you know yeah you can just see that they are talented so they, they progress pretty fast and yeah the hokipa that they've been putting the hours in um like the last couple of years and you could you can really see the progression they're both pretty yeah, but, confident, aren't they? Yeah. They're both, yeah they, you know, like, <laughs> I could choose different words sometimes, but, you know, they're quite quite confident. I think that's the best way to describe it. Like, they do think they're going to win, they're, you know, which is you yeah. have to be as a champion. But I would yeah. say Liam, for 100%, steps up in competition. Like, when you see him doing these youth heats and the PWA, he's definitely in the heat, manages to nail... Well, sometimes he doesn't always get in pre-sailing, you know. So I think that's obviously a good attribute. And obviously, dad's stuff's yeah. wearing off him. Yeah. And Marino as well, like, it's just so yeah. confident. And you just yeah. see it in his sailing. Yeah. But there's uh, yeah, the, there's two persons that, are, for me, like, that I've seen them do that in the contest, like, pulling up things I can, that I don't see them doing pre-sailing. One of them is Marino. The other one is uh, Arthur. Like, yeah. Arthur, I don't know how the heck he does it. But as well, every time he competes, you see him do something crazy. You're like, what the heck? How did you do that? I have never seen you do that. You know? Like, what, I remember not what, Arthur's not there, no. no he, he, he said he was not going to compete this year. I think he's, uh, he's, he's just going to be on Maui. He's going to do the, the testing uh, for, for Duoton. No. Okay. Yeah. Did, did I miss something? What, what's happening with Batiste? What, what happened with him? I uh, have no clue. Oh, okay. Because he's, he's not injured, is he? I don't know. No, no, no. I, I, I not, not that I've, seen him. I've seen him in Cape Town. He's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, he's mm. all good. Mm, okay. He's definitely a. I thought he'd be there. I thought like this port tag yeah. down the line. You know, yeah. I really thought he'd be he'd be yeah. right right yeah. there on yeah. it. Maybe yep. I mean I don't know if he's still does if he's still doing the same. But he was working in a boat last year, no. Mm. Yeah, ferry captain like or something. Yeah, ferry driver, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, so maybe it has something to do with mm. that. Maybe yep. he just can't, yep. can't get off uh, his like, yeah, on, on duty. That's a shame. He cannot get off. I don't know. Again, I'm just guessing. Yep. Yeah. That's a shame. Okay, next heat um, on the on the board. Uh, Victor Fernandez, Thomas Traversa, uh, Rio Nagoshi, and uh, Benjamin Fabrice. Fabrice, yeah. Yeah, the ben Benjamin, as I said, is the brother of Diego, another amazing sailor. And uh, yeah, Victor needs no introduction, the competition machine himself. <laughs> um, yeah, Big Victor, I think, you know, he just he's just good in everything. And especially during contests, he just makes 
he just connects it connects the dots you know so he can make yeah, things happen there. yeah he's got a house there as well he did spend <laughs> quite a bit of time there in the in the past um so you know he, he knows the the spot very well actually my first time that i went to chile it was with him um, okay so mm. yeah so i think you know for sure he's gonna do great riding as you can expect from him and uh, and toma the, the the same you know like uh, in wave riding stuff he's got this uh, ninja ninja approach that he just gets in places where you don't believe that he's fitted in and then suddenly he lands on his feet even though he should be <laughs> pinned to the bottom <laughs> so especially if it's bigger i think it, it could you know he could do really well and ryu uh, he's pretty young again in Japan he did really good at his home spot um, I think he hasn't sailed much port back down the line but I've been seeing uh, like posts and stuff from him and you know he he seems on it like he, he wants to really push and improve and you know he's been doing some nice airs and stuff so yeah let's see he could do maybe he could he, he could surprise everyone you know again like he did in Japan you never know and and then as I said, Benjamin is is local. He he's got the local knowledge and he's got the the skills and the saving. So he he could be causing some upsets. I tell you what, just going through these heats, I'm already getting kind of excited because <laughs> there's no foregone conclusions, which is what for me makes an exciting competition. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially because it's kind of a new spot on the tour for a lot of people. Obviously, people have been going there for years. But in terms of competition and PWA and five stars, and then you look at this last heat, and there's only three riders in it at the moment. Obviously, one of the guys from the Challenger fleet is going to come and join them. But this is pretty yeah. stacked. You know, Bernd yeah. Rodiger leading the tour at the moment. Julian Salmon, who was in the final last year. Alessio yeah. Stilrich, you know, Port Tack down the line. Alessio's got some moves. And then obviously one of the guys from the Challenger fleet coming up. Not easy. Yeah. You've only got two riders mm -hmm. going through. You know, yeah. Bernd probably under a bit of pressure there. Port Tack down the line. Honestly, mm. like, he operates like a... I think his brain operates slightly different, and I I think he's gonna no I, I mean I don't mean it in, in in a bad way like but I think yeah. he, you know for example me I, I would just be like you know like and just be nervous and stuff you know I'm just like going to something and I I know like knowing him I know he's probably just gonna take like more like the soul surfer like uh, enjoy kind of style yeah I don't know from from what I've seen it like mm. during his hits, you know, and I think part of that is is why then he sometimes pulls these uh, amazing like uh, last minute maneuvers and he gets the score, you know, it's just because mm. he just goes with, with the flow, you know. But and, does uh, he sail much port attack down the line? I mean, I, I don't know, but I, I mean, I've sailed, I've seen him sail, like, especially during COVID, we had some some days on the south of Maui with Southwell, yeah. you know, and I didn't no, I mean, I was not expecting him to be good. You know, for me, he was like the Hukipa specialist. And the, and the guy, he was like doing takas and everything, you know. And so he's okay. super good. And actually, you know, in Fiji, he's, he's really good. And, yeah. And then surfing, I know he can surf pretty much the same or the same regular and goofy. So I think that for sure helps him. So I don't think he cares much. I think he's just going to apply feel to the situation and he's just going to make it happen, you know. <clears throat> Is, is for, is for yeah, sure he's going to be dangerous. He, he, you can tell in his, yeah, his approach to wave sailing makes him dangerous. I've seen him in Cape Verde. Yeah. You see him at the last event in Japan. Like I said, he just feels it somehow. And it, yeah. it's almost like the nerves are not there. He, exactly. And you listen to his interviews. He always comes across like, ah, I just, you know, was waiting, making sure I was in, I felt good, felt like something yeah. was going to happen. And it did. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. you know, you, it's just a different a, a different yeah. feel you get from him yeah. again. Yeah. And we know how competitive he is. You know, he's yeah. he's got that killer, killer instinct. He comes yeah. across kind of like that, but he has got a real sharp yeah. um, focus for competition. Yeah. Are we um, okay? This, so this is going to be just. Uh, oh, 
you go, Benny. No, carry on. I was just going to say that the only oh. thing is you have to remember this isn't a double elimination. This is a, a dingle. So there is a repertage round. Um, so if you don't make it through this first heat in the ones we've just read out, you do get a second chance in the in the next round. And the winners yeah. jump uh, forward one. So you yeah. do mm. get that second chance. Again, we're not going to go through all those different connotations, but that's just to give you an idea of who's there who's up for the chance we're gonna have obviously have a look at the women as well um but it's it's just running through that it's the first time i've really run through it there's some really tricky ones to call there and wave riding only i keep mm. mentioning it but it's it's going to deliver some upsets and don't be surprised if you see some of the top seeded guys go out in the first round it really yep. wouldn't surprise me you know looking at a few of those matchups they if somebody just has that that killer heat, they could cause some big problems. And there might be a few guys that you've not written off, but you're not really thinking they're going to do much damage, and they might just come and absolutely uh, shred it up. So, Would you mind yeah. just uh, zooming out, Benny, just so we could just see an yeah. overall perspective of that? Because I'm also curious for Mark's uh, opinion on this, because when I uh, met him in Fiji, it was one of the first times I'd been – introduced to a major competition and there was a lot of conversation about singles or dingles versus double eliminations and so forth but obviously this format is a dingle style format with redemption rounds what do you think about that mark you, you think that's the way to go for um i mean do you have any opinions I, I, on that or mm, yes and no i mean actually for me personally i'll just go with whatever they tell me to go with you know yeah. Um, I think doubles are fair, uh, honestly. I think they are a bit more fair just because you can get a more accurate re result. It's maybe not as fair for the winner, but, you know, then it gets more fair because then you can have a super final. Um, mm. But, uh, yeah, I think it's fine, you know. I think dingles are better in a, in a media point of view. You know, it's easier to understand for people that n are not as much into it. You know, because it's just basically like a pyramid with just like a redemption round in the in the middle. So yep. it is easier to understand than telling someone, oh, no, he won, but now he might lose, you know. So yep. in, in this sense, it, it's true. But, uh, you know, for an athlete, it, it is more fair, um, a double, if you have the chance to do it, if the conditions allow mm. it, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it is kind of exciting. I don't know what you think, Ben, but... Looking at the way it's structured, I kind of like it from a media point of view because you can see a, a progression that just leads to a winner and it's a bit maybe not as good for the sailors, but it it visually is probably easier for people to follow. What do you think? Yeah, yeah I mean, and like Mark just Mark yeah. said it then. I mean, the, yeah. the difficulty is is the media versus the fairest, you know, the double elimination. We'll say the double elimination. So I feel like it is the fairer way. But at the mm. same time, it also can be a bit shit because if you have, let's say, great conditions in the single, like amazing conditions, and then saleable but average conditions in the double, the winner could come from the maybe averagely not great conditions, which already you've got most people there, so not many people are moving around too much. But there is that side of it, and it, it is confusing for the media. I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very difficult to tell the radio station, the TV station, whatever, the winner's this, and then the next day they're like, what are you doing? Oh, we go, oh, we're doing this thing where this chance get a chance to take on the winner again. And, it, you know, when you understand it, it makes perfect sense. It's actually quite exciting. If someone comes yep. on a run mm -hmm. in the double, like Mark in Pozo and Brown in Pozo, it gets really exciting. And what I've noticed is as much as most people may be, oh, the double is no good. When we didn't have the double in Japan, I had so many people message me going, hey, is that it? Is it finished? Well, that's mm -hmm. it. It's done. Don't we, doesn't someone get a chance to come back? And it's like, no, that's mm -hmm. it. It's done. I'm not, and they're like, yeah. oh. So it was kind of left them a little bit empty. But again, mm -hmm. it, it depends on what background and what you're used to, I, I think. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. like I said, I think they, the PWA, IWT, they've got to experiment with this sort of things. And sometimes you have to do 
guinea pigging around and just work out what feels good, what works best. It's never a perfect science, these things. But until you actually do it and you experiment, which is difficult because people's careers and stuff are on the line. So it is difficult. But at the same time, there's no other way of doing it. You know, and, yep. and it is there. The winner will, I always say it, right? The winner will be the winner. No matter what, whatever you do, the winner has usually deserved to be the winner. The other riders, if if the second best rider in the competition got the winner in the first heat, let's say in a single elimination, they could mm. end up last, but they could be the second best rider, mm. but they lost to the, the best guy. If you end up fifth because you get the winner in the, in the third round or whatever it is, you know, it's and you can't really get around that it happens in tennis it happens in everything so yep. you've got to find a way to do it and the problem has always been with windsurfing is we don't have enough events for themselves to even out you know if you yep. only got two events or three events a year it's pretty difficult to get out of that horrible situation and I, i'm quite well documented of i was stuck in like 16th seed for years i was either 17 mm. 16th 15th around that area and the problem is with that if you don't do a double elimination you just do a single i was getting costa or victor in pozo every year and i was sailing at those times back you know 10 odd years ago now decent like pretty decent but i would lose to these guys who who finished first and second every year for like six seven years and it was in my sweet spot of when i was sailing good and you couldn't beat them. They were literally, no one was beating them. So you were like, oh, if I'd have been on the other side of the draw. And there was one point mm. I was thinking, I need to lose, get a different seed in, and then rather challenge myself against the guys further down, even though I'd have to do a harder heat, you know, so to speak, in the early rounds. I would get an easy heat, then I would get one of these. Anyway, anyway, that's mm. a long way of saying it, it's horses for courses different every event. Yeah. That's why you're not world champion. It was because of that. Was, well, you're not world champion, no, but no, I, no. Yeah, it's seriously why I didn't get better. No, no, I, I, I know. No, no. Like, I no, definitely it's... had two years where I was sailing the best ever, and I just got so slew. It but, is. You know, it is if you're going to be the best in the tough. world, and that's what the, my point I was making is: these competitions are not to find the fifth best person; they're to find mm. the winner. You know, that's what mm. competition. It's tough if you're in fifth or you're in sixth or you're fourth, but realistically, the outside world only really care about the winner. So competition is designed to find the best person. That's it, you know, and, and that's the problem. When you're a mid-tier sailor, like I was, I guess, you can be way more unlucky with your draw, whereas if you're the best guy, it doesn't matter. You draw him anywhere yep. because he's the best guy. So, you know, that that's when competition feels a bit scary and your your livelihood your sponsorships you know are you top 10 and that can be the difference if there's only two events a year of what seeding you get and who you get and how it works yeah. out so the, the the moral of the story is just get bloody good be the best <laughs> you don't have to worry mm. about it you know no, and that's I... why you can't rely i always tell most guys if they're ever asking me advice on sponsorship and i was like you cannot rely on competitions you know, you can only do your best, but the seeding there's it's a moment in time. So you have to do all the other stuff to give yourself the backup. And then the competition should be just one side of it. If you just put yourself as a competition rider, so difficult, so much pressure. You know, one event a year, maybe one single elimination. Yeah. It's like all your stuff depends on this. If you don't deliver, that's it. It's yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. No, it's gnarly. It's gnarly. What happened to the heat draw? It's gone. We lost it. At least with this uh, system now, there's a second chance because, uh, yeah, in some of the events of the last uh, 12 months, it's been just elimination every every round. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear us, Benny? He's frozen. <laughs> oh, he's frozen. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I can um, – let me see because I might have – see if I can pull it up here. Bear with me. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm just sharing my screen until Ben comes back. But yeah, like I was saying, Mark, at least now we've got this redemption round, whereas in the, some of the events gone by, there hasn't been this, has there? It's just gone straight to yep. from round one to eliminations, eliminations, and then obviously that's made it pretty tough for sailors yep. exiting early on. Yep. Yeah, the problem is like the good and the bad thing with the single double, as you said, you know, like you don't get um, this second chance if you only do a, a single. But if the mm -hmm. conditions are not good, you know, it cuts a lot of time, you know, so you can yeah. get to a result way faster, you know, where here mm -hmm. you are eating like another whatever hour or hour and a bit or two of hits, you know, where you could be. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's a tricky thing, you know. But definitely in wave riding events where you can, you know, kind of guarantee yourself um, a, a dingle, but it's not enough for a double. I think then hundred percent um, a dingle is is good, you know. It's more fair. Yep. All right. Well, I'll I'll take over Ben's job until he comes back, if he, if he does yeah, come good. back. But I'll move on to the uh, the women's side of things. So actually, before I do that, I'm just making sure. So what's happening here? Oh, I see. So over here we've got uh, pro junior boys, girls. Uh, okay, cool. So this will be fairly straightforward on the women's side. So let me just zoom in here. So it looks like, so here is the, what we'd call that the challenges round, I guess. Would you, would you think so, Mark, this, this first heat here? It looks like, no, or. Yeah. Is it? Well. No, it's like, what is it? non eliminate Yeah. I actually don't fully understand it. Could be like, yeah. a, like a challenger round or it yeah, could just I... be like a, like an extra heat maybe, you know. Well, yeah, because I'm just looking here. It's got CH2 and CH1. So I'm assuming first and second get placed into these heats here. But anyway, maybe maybe yeah. not. Yeah. Are you are you familiar with any of these names? Not the ones in like kind of this first challenger heat. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah probably actually, all... I don't, don't know any of them. Yeah, okay. No, apologies. I mean, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm unfamiliar with them as well. They're probably um, South American ladies. So going through the first heat here, we've got Sarah Hauser, and apologies for my pronunciation here, Lena Bang Wittrup. Lena, Wittrup. is that yeah. her? Yeah. Yeah. Lena. And Justina uh, Sniadi. Have you got? What's your thoughts on uh, on that heat there? Oh, I think it's going to be fully packed of action. You know, Sarah. I mean, she lives on Maui now, but she's a charger, and she is from. Um, from New Caledonia, so she's definitely used to sailing good port deck uh, down the line sailing. Mm -hmm. um, Line, she's from Denmark. She's a really good sailor as well. I um, mean, Denmark, they do get good down the line as well, not in the Chile standards or New Caledonia standards, but it's pretty fun, good down the line as well. And Justina spends a lot of time in, in Australia, you know, so I think mm -hmm. it could be some uh, high damage hit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with Justina because she spends a lot of time yeah. here in Western Australia and she's had a lot of practice in Port Tac. So that would serve her well over in Chile. So I'd be curious to see how she goes there. So that will be an interesting one. And then the second yeah. heat, Maria Behrens, Lena Erpenstein, Sybil Bode, Bode? Yeah. Bode? and Maria Morales Navarro. Um yeah. So Sybil actually was here in Western Australia. So I got to see her sail. So she's been practicing in Port Tac. The other okay. sailors you'd be probably more familiar with. What's your thoughts there? Yeah. I mean, Maria, she did a really good year last year. I think she finished uh, fifth overall if I'm, or fourth, fifth, fourth yep. or fifth, fifth. Um, yep. You know, she was second in sailed. She's a pretty good sailor. She's got a very good top turn on her. And then you have Lena Erpenstein. Uh, for me, she's one of the standouts, especially in Portak wave riding. She's got like one of the meanest top turns you can see in the, <laughs> in yeah. the, in the girls' fleet, um, you know, and she's got a really powerful style. So 
for me personally, I, th I would expect her, uh, you know, to to do well in, in this con in this kind of conditions. Uh, I was with her in 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 Tarifa uh, for like a week and, and and so so I saw her sailing and she was ripping. So yeah, I think she's yeah. got a really good chance. Sibyl, as you said, uh, you've seen her probably more than I have uh, sailing. Um, and then Maria, she's known, uh, she's from Tenerife. She's known for her more side on onshore riding, but uh, I'm sure she's going to put on a, an amazing performance anyway in the down the line stuff. Yep. Not good on you. Um, all right. That is Heat 2. So now we'll move. Uh, heat 3, Maria Andres, Sol Diedrich, Alex mm -hmm. Kiefer Quintana. This is really testing me. And Lisa Wormaster, yeah. Maria Andres, and Sol Dietrich. Sol Dietrich is probably now what fourteen years old. Is she? I actually, I don't know. Maybe, maybe fifteen, yeah. something like oh, that. Oh, fifteen yeah. now. Okay, yeah. she was thirteen yeah. or fourteen last year, and yeah, um, yeah maybe she 14. was. She was pretty young. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. You know, to see her out there in, yeah. uh, you know, ten foot, uh, ten twelve foot cloud break out there. Yeah. <laughs> It was incredible, but um, Maria Andre is obviously someone that has been around a long time. You know, she, she's been to a lot of events over the last few years. Um, Alex Kiefer, I'm not so familiar with. Yeah, do you know? Uh, do you know Alex? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she's from from Pozo, and yep. uh, yeah, she's one of the best sailors as well there. Uh, she's been sailing really, really good and improving a lot the last years. So, and actually the other day she posted one turn that I was like, wow. Was, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, really, really amazing. So if she links those ones in the contest, she could, yeah, do some proper damage. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And then Lisa from Guadeloupe. Um, yeah, she's uh, very familiar mm. with, the, with the wave riding conditions. So I would expect her to... To put on a good performance too so you know it's another heat full of action packed you know and as ben was saying i think it's it's very hard to you know to choose like uh two, two sailors from every heat you know because it, i think it, mm. it it's just so open at the moment it could just go either way so it's going to be yep. an interesting contest yeah no no doubt have you actually sailed at uh guadalupe before because i'm seeing quite no. a few clips yeah it looks pretty good like yeah. The waves from uh, Kami, some of them look amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah. from what I've heard from Antoine and, and Kami, like it's not always that it fires mm. like that, but when yeah. it does, it looks amazing. The it wave looks so, so much fun and clean and perfect. So yeah, I would love to sail it one day, but I think it it's uh, you have to be there like throughout the winter to get like that yeah. that one swell or that that swell that it's gonna. Fire up those reefs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, round, sorry, not round. Uh, heat four. We've got Coco Favo from Guad. Uh, she's from Guadeloupe. Is she? Uh, she's from France, but I think she's oh. been uh, she's been living in Guadeloupe. Um, oh, I see. But yep. but I, I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, she's French. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, yeah. uh, Jane Seaman. Uh, she's well, I know she's an Aussie. Yeah. And Pauline Katz. I'm not so familiar with Pauline. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know who? Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she lives in uh, in Pozo now. She's Swiss, and uh, yeah, she's mm. again another really good sailor. Um, yeah. She's been uh, pushing a lot the last few years and improving a lot. So it's been yeah. cool to see. She actually was gonna go to Maui um, to finish the tour, uh, but she got injured last time. So unfortunately, you know, she had to bail out. So it's gonna be interesting how she gets on this year, you know, especially mm. after all the work that she's put in. So it's going to be cool to see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, it's a good, um, it's a good woman's fleet, which is good to see. They've got a redemption round as well. So everyone gets a second chance or, you know, yeah, you, at least you get to, to sell twice yeah. at a minimum. Um, actually, before I'll quickly move on there, I'll just bring up the rankings for the women because... We did that for the men. So where are we? We've got here. Uh, yeah, so we can just have a look at what is going on here. Matoko Sato, who is not in Chile, but she is currently 
on top, the 10,000 points. Then we've got Sarah Hauser, Maria Andres, Maria Morales, Natsuki Wakasa, Shoko, Minoku. Well, there's a lot of Japanese. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, so we've got Sarah Hauser, Maria Andres, Maria Morales. They are definitely on the, um, the heat draw. But there's obviously quite a few names that didn't appear in Japan that are going into Chile. So there's going to be a bit yeah. of a um, a bit of a, a change, or, you know, yeah. A, yeah, a bit of a shake up in this whole leaderboard here, and a lot of new names coming yeah. onto it as well. Yeah. So that will be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll have a quick look at the um, the. Sorry, guys. We're just going back into it here. Uh, oops. Where are we? Oh, here it is. Sorry, guys. Um, where are we? So then uh, we have... Okay, so we've got the Pro Junior Boys, and there's actually going to be a few from the uh, the Pro Division. Liam, yep. Ayata. So they're going to be busy sailing, but we've got a few other sailors here. Jose... Are you familiar with uh, any of the names here? What? Um, I mean, Jose I know Fabres. Fabres. Yeah. not Jose Fabres or Joaquin Pratt. Joaquin Pratt. Yeah. I yeah. Don't, I, don't, I don't think I, I know them. Um, yep. Okay. Well, that's then, interesting. Yeah, I know Kaimani Loran. She's from uh, from Guadeloupe as well. Uh, she's coming with uh, he is coming with all the Guadeloupe and crew. Sorry. And then Loic, I don't know who, who that is. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the, the rest we've talked about. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, well, it's um, a few new names there. And then the women's, uh, Maria Morales, uh, Noni Stoven, Stoven, Sol Diedrich, and Lisa Vermeister. So yeah. they get some more sailing. And then on the, there's an under-18 junior boys and under-18 junior girls. God, Soul is <laughs> – she's going to be sailing three different divisions, which is cool. Yeah. Um, yes. So she's going to probably get uh, some of the most sailing out of everybody. So, oh, well, that, that is – That's good. That? It's, it's, it's not a bad place to get uh, a lot of sailing, you know. If, if yeah. You can have uh, the, that amazing spot by yourself. So I think it's yeah. definitely something positive that she, that she can do that. She's only going to be tired, though. <laughs> no, that's uh, there's a there's a question here from Tomas. I, I don't have the answer to this. I don't know if you know, Mark. It says, "Do you know if there's a time limit to run the trials?" Would you have any idea? Time limit to run the trials? Um, in what sense? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, are you sort of maybe he's talking about if uh, the conditions aren't going to be uh, good enough yeah. to, to get through it all. But yeah, sorry, Tomash, I'm not, not too sure yeah. on the answer to that one. Yeah. Um, I guess, and, I mean, I guess, I guess they need to go through the trials uh, first, you know, for sure. So I, I don't think they can go straight into the main event um, without the trials. So, or the challenger hits. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Um, actually, just one more thing before we probably wrap it up. I thought I might just have a quick look at the forecast. Yeah. Because I that might be interesting. Bear with me here. Um, I've just pulled this up, so it might not be the best forecast for me to be looking at. This is supposedly Topakama, so yeah. I'm not sure – if they'll be running it at Matanzas or Top of Car. Would you, actually, would you would you have any idea? Um, from what I've heard, it's going to be mainly in Matanzas with the option oh. of changing to Top Calma for finals day. Um, okay. That's, well, maybe I should be looking. Yeah, that, that, that was the last thing that I heard. Um, but yeah. And normally for Chile, Wind Guru seems to work the best. Wind Guru, let me just do that. Yeah. Wind Guru. And you just search for Matanzas. Matan How do you spell Matanzas? Oh, there it is. <clears throat> yeah. That's actually what I was looking for, and I just couldn't find it when I was. All right. This is looking better. 
Um, so are we? So going from the, can you see that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So the event windows from the first to the 12th, I believe. Yeah. So we look like, well, it looks like we've got some swell. Yeah. Yeah. Straight think, up. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the period is a little small on the, hmm. on the first, um, but yeah but i think it, it's still going to be fun a uh, little bit more on the lighter side it looks like the first days and then there's a, a swell coming in in 15 seconds which that looks a little better um, yeah but then the wind as well turns more onshore uh, so yeah normally when it's like that it doesn't really there's uh, one spot that works which is like hidden in the middle of uh of some cliffs, but uh, it doesn't work often. Um, so well, the ideal wind direction is just say south or, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, like the south or, or southwest like that. It's the best. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, not, not too south, but like south, southwest like this. Yeah. Okay. And the, the wind forecast here, is it pretty sort of accurate? So it's saying, you know, 15 to 18 knots, that's kind of what it is or does it, um, in your experience? Yeah, actually, it, yeah, I don't remember so much if like how accurate it is in this way. I just know like if it's like that, it's uh, it's windy, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, I, it's I windy know. Enough. It, yeah, you might not say like on four five, but you might be on a five zero. Yeah, okay. Um, or, or maybe a four seven in uh, in Topokalma if the wind yep. kicks in. Yep. Uh, the the problem you need and the problem that they might encounter it's either if it's too warm or if it's cloudy that does slow down the wind you know so then it mm. just pushes kind of a cloud like a mist onto the sea and then sometimes it doesn't go away you know or it goes away right at the end of the day so mm -hmm. that's one of the problems that they might encounter but okay. it doesn't it doesn't look like the temperature is too high you know which shouldn't be a problem um, that actually should help the the wind so okay all right cool and then looking further on i mean the wind does lighten up a bit the swell drops off a little bit but then the period comes up so later yeah. in the week i mean in here and the six that looks sick. yeah, yeah. That looks like, this sick. is actually it's actually looks like quite a consistent sort of area a yeah. lot of sailing days you can get yeah, I heard um, the su the summer like it was pretty warm, and all the way till now it's been too hot, so it's been mm. messing up the the wind. But uh, yeah. it seems like now maybe with it cooling down a little more again, uh, it's yeah. helping it, you know, like to get into the right rhythm again. So yeah, yeah, L lucky anyway, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but fingers crossed because this forecast is looking pretty promising, especially yeah, for the. The Fifth, following sixth, uh, weekend, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens, but um, I don't know. We'll we'll probably should uh, wrap it up there, Mark. Um, we did. Good. I think we did okay without Benny, our um, our head man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was and we'll, um, it worked out. Yeah, we lost him, but uh, no, cool. Well, hopefully you can join us again, mate, because uh, sure. we plan to do you know a few of these through the event, and it'd be awesome to get your uh, your expert opinion on uh, on everything. So, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you, Mark. All right, mate. Well, um, we'll catch up with everybody soon, and uh, till then, take care, guys. Hope you get some sailing in. See yeah. you guys. Bye. It's that time of the week again. Sit back, relax, we got the brain of Ben. No need to stress in the house, is Van Bellen. The game is when surfing, you can yell them or tell them. We get the news, the views, the wind biz. The brand's gear tips plus the world's best quiz. The cars P W A. We're professionals without the pay. There's nothing in pole dancing that we won't chat. From tandem boards to a windsurfing cat. It's your one stop shop for laughing. Listen, tune in each week or you'll be doing the missing. I said I'll be back, so here I am. Thanks to Mark for giving his expert analysis. I can't wait for the Chile event. I thought PVB killed it tonight.
He's extremely witty and apparently shreds as well. Look forward to future podcasts. Get to the chopper. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be 